All right, it's Mark Raz. We've been talking uh, pretty much all day about Mick Jagger calling in. He's on the telephone right now. Mick. Hey, Mark, how are you? Hey, how are you, sir? Yeah, not so bad. I've just gone into New York, and I'm happy to be here. Well, we're excited about Wandering Spirit. We've been checking out a couple of the tracks here, especially one called Sweet Fang yep. and Don't Tear Me Up. Yeah. And a couple things I wanted to ask you about. You're dealing with Rick Rubin now, who um, has done a lot of things, including some rap stuff. He actually made Run DMC very famous. He's worked with the Red Hot Chili Peppers. He's worked with the Cult. And now he's working with you. How did that uh, happen? Well, I knew I knew Rick when he was just like out. He'd just done the um, uh, LL Cool J records, the early ones, you know. Right. And I met him when he was just out of college in New York. And he'd done, he was just doing the Beastie Boys. You remember the first Beastie Boys sure. record, which was so successful? That was a great album. They're licensed to ill. And then, so I met him then, and, you know, we talked and stuff. And then, then he went off to Los Angeles um, and... He sort of more or less stopped producing rap, and, and um, he went on to produce, uh, like, garage bands. I mean, uh, I mean, I know he produced the people you said, but he did a lot, mostly, of garage bands, and then he did the Chili Peppers record. Right. And, um, you know, I thought that, you know, he wasn't a guy that was particularly stuck in one kind of music, which I liked, because I wanted to make an album that was had a lot of different styles on it. And um, also... I thought that, you know, I wanted to make an album that was relatively straight uh, as far as production values and not too many frills. And so, uh, you know, we got together and started, you know, working on it. And I already had the songs done, and I'd done a lot of work on the album already. So, you know, we seemed to get on quite good. Well, let's talk about some of the artists. You had Flea playing bass on some stuff. Yeah, I, I, Flea was hanging, you know, Flea and, um, and Anthony were hanging around the studio quite a lot, so we... We decided to put Flea to work. Yeah, was he wearing? Was he wearing? Was he? Did he perform in his underwear? Yeah, of course he did. And his hair was all different colours. But you know, he's a he's actually quite a good bass player all around. You know, he doesn't just play that one popping style. He, he can play a lot of styles. Mm. And he played like on this. Uh, he even played on this sort of country thing and on gospel kind of feel. So he enjoyed himself doing that. Now, what about Doug Wimbish of Living Colour? Who, yeah, uh, Doug. Doug, I worked with for many years before he was in Living Colour. Right. Um, you know, I worked with my first solo album he played on, and uh, he's a great bass player, especially in that, that in that style. And um, you know, he came and did that one track. Now, now is he going to replace Bill Wyman? What's the story on that? Um, Doug, well, Doug's in Living Color, so you know, I wouldn't try and. I mean, I would, and he's only just joined it. Yeah, I know. He just so, got hired last year. Yeah, I know. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't even start to want to poach um, yeah. Doug from my friends in Living Colour. Uh, <laughs> would well, be my friends much longer. Well, I'll tell you, he's the, the, he's the big choice right now by a lot of people in the music industry. Yeah, well, he's a great bass player, but and as I say, I don't think, you know, uh, it would be very cool of me to try and poach him from Living Colour at this point. Now, Wandering Spirit, you're not going to do a tour to support this? I was going to do a tour, but, you know, it got so late uh, on it. It was supposed to come out in October and so on. But And I have to sort of get on and start writing songs for the next Stones album, so I don't think I'll be doing any big tour behind it. Yeah. I want to take you back a little a little ways here. Yeah. When you guys were getting ready to do, and, and, and pardon me if the album title's wrong, you guys, there's so many of them. Yeah. Tattoo You or Some Girls. Yeah, tattoo You. Okay, you did Longview Farms in North Brookfield. You were rehearsing out yeah, there, and you I came back. That. Yeah, And you also um, had not been on stage for five years with the Stones. You came back. You remember Sir Morgan's Cove? Yes. On Green Street in Worcester before you went to Philadelphia? I do indeed. What was it like? That was a, not, it's right down the street from the radio station here. Really? What was it like yeah. to go back into the clubs again? Uh, that was a really mad gig. I remember it very well. And the streets outside were very crowded too, do you remember? Yeah, well, I was not there particularly, but uh, when talking about the history of the radio station here at WAAF, people say that uh, your managers at the time were like, if the streets are busy, the Stones are going to get freaked, they're not going to show up. But anyway, how do you stop people from uh, attending the Stones show? I don't know, but it was, it, was, no, it, was a really, it was a really good gig, and, uh, and I, I remember it very well. I do remember the streets outside being really crowded. Um, yeah, we, we worked up there at Longview for a long while rehearsing. Yeah. Well, yeah. you think you'll get back up this way again? Yep. Who knows? As soon as we can. Yeah. Well, anyway, Mark, nice All to right. talk to you. Well, I really appreciate you calling in. Yeah. Uh, you're a legend, guy, and I'm, I'm real happy to have sat here and talked to you today. This is Mark. Nice to talk to you. Have, a, right. good, have a good afternoon. Mick now. Jagger. Bye now. Thanks for calling in. 107.3 WAAF, man. I'm sweating right now. You believe this? <laughs> it's 107.3 WAAF.